Good afternoon and welcome to this meeting of the COLA, which has been conducted from the Council Chamber and remotely through Microsoft Teams. And before yeah. we begin, I will ask Councillor Angus Morrison to lead us in prayer. Receive the beauty of the creation on the bridge of such a road as David. O Lord, as far as we this, this creation of things, we have continued to, to shine the face of God's glorious name. We are aware of so many changes on the bridge of this world. We have just made known to us each other. We are alive. We are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, we pray that you direct us to you. Holy word, each and every one that we are told, we think so often that we are in control. We are the author and finisher of the story. We are the one who is the alpha, we are the one who is the omega, but in the last. Bless each one present here this day, Lord, in the chamber, for the rock which we carry, sir, those who are at home, those who may be listening in, each one with a different name, come for those who know more. Here of the devil in the bright each day, Lord, this day, we have heard once again the point, ask for the sin of trials of good news. Teach us, Lord, the number of the day. Oh, Lord, that tomorrow was in promise to all of us. If this was our last day here in this world, Lord, we'll question and examine for a standing of you. What we thank you that if we come to you, Lord, there are very few of you. I will be able to drink from that thing. Drink from the living water. Press the chief executive, press the chief executive, the convener, all officers, Lord, all men. Lord, my duty and responsibility every day is to fulfill and carry our duties to the best of our ability. Lord, then we pray that you will be in this duty. Just in order to live in the nation, it's the hardest Thank you very much, Councillor Morrison. The meeting has now been recorded and will be available on the CORUS website following the meetings. I am rolling item 6E as urgent. There is also an additional item in relation to the sale of Scalpy School, which I'm rolling as urgent to ena enable the purchaser to submit the funding application the Scottish Land Fund by funding deadline, and this item will be taken in private at the end. I will now ask Derek Mackay, Governance and Election Manager, to read this in surveillance. Derek. Thank you, Councillor Morrison. Good afternoon, Barra August Vattersay, <laughs> uh, Kenneth John McLean, Tommy Shaw, uh, Ian A. McNeil, Usha Jess, Ediske August Benavilla, Ian M. McLeod, Tommy Shaw, Susan Thompson, uh, Usha Tua, we have apologies from uh, Councillor Mr. Patterson, Usha Robertson, Neherach, Paul Finnegan, Tommy Shaw, Skirn and Loch, Robert McKenzie. Here. Yeah. Angus Morrison. We have a, a Skiri Week, Augs Karlovach. We have apologies from Councillor uh, Ranald Fraser. Norman MacDonald. Oh, sorry, we have apologies from Councillor Norman MacDonald as well. Tiv Shear August Nish. John Norman MacLeod. I'm here. <coughs> Donald McSween. I'm here. Lochatua. Donald F. Crichton. John A. McKeever. Uh, Councillor Colin McLean has indicated he may be late to the meeting. He's attending a, a, a funeral. Uh, Strona Makatua, Ian M. McCauley. <coughs> Malcolm K. McLeod. <coughs> MacDonald. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, Gordon Murray. Strona Fingajess, Ray McKenzie. 
Yeah. Uh, Angus McCormack. Yeah. <clears throat> Dr. Francis Murray. And George Murray. Skeer and Rue. Norrie MacDonald. And Finley M. Stewart. On a show. Twenty-four uh, members of the core, basically. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Eric. And um, before we go to the tributes and start the formal part of the agenda today, I would like to say a few words about our trip to you, Sambara, last week. For the first time since April 2014, we held service committee meetings outside Stornoway. 30 members and officers travelled from Lewis on Monday, the uh, 22nd of April, by bus to Learborough and called the, the afternoon ferry to Burnley. On Tuesday, we held the Sustainable Education and Audit and Scrutiny Committee meetings at Knox Sagath in South Lewis. A first class facility and the staff there couldn't do enough for us. On Wednesday morning, we travelled to Barra, catching the early morning ferry, and then made our way to Vatashi Hall for the meetings of the Transportation and Policy and Resources Committee. Again, we were in an excellent facility, and the volunteers from the Hall Committee did themselves proud uh, with the way they set up the facility uh, in preparation for the meeting and for the lunch and teas and coffees uh, they provided us in the Hall. At both venues, members of the local community were in attendance in the public area. This was also very good to see. It was good for us as members and officers to see used on battle, but it was even better for us as a caller to be seen holding meetings out with Solon. The visits to Scotland, <coughs> Kinetic, Balashek, Causeway, and Scotland were very much enjoyed by all. And again, it was so good to see these places and facilities. Everyone who went on the trip would say, I hope, and that, well, I know they would. It was a very enjoyable four days, and it will be a trip that will stay long in their memories. It was a very positive exercise for us as a cooler and a great team builder for members and officers. A trip like that takes a huge amount of planning between buses, ferries and accommodation. We have the easy part, members <clears throat> and the, the officers who travel down. Uh, we just had to turn up, catch McLennan's bus, leaving the, the car park here, then catching the ferry uh, at Leverborough and turning up at a pre-booked accommodation. The accommodation in uh, U.S. Tambara was absolutely first class. It was excellent. We, we couldn't have been in better accommodation. And also, you know, turning up at the meeting menus. All this could not have been done without uh, excellent staff. And I particularly pay tribute to Belan Scott and Joan McInnes, who made all the bookings and sorted out all the travel logistics and booked the accommodation. Everything you would all agree, run like clockwork. And, I, and we can't thank Belan and Joanne enough for the way everything went last week. Also, our Democratic Services team of Derek, Shona, Marina, uh, Stephen, Fiona and Yvonne made sure we had the paperwork for all the meetings and a huge thanks to Derek and the team for, for, for that. And finally, we have to thank Guinness McKeever and Adam Hill from our IT department who ensured the meetings could take place at these venues in Euston Vatashi. It was unfortunate that uh, there wasn't an outside connection to the meetings on the Wednesday in Vatashi, but it certainly wasn't through the lack of time. It was a huge, hugely enjoyable four days, but it would never have happened without the massive input from all the staff members I have mentioned. So again, a big thanks for all you did for us. We really appreciate it. And you made sure that our trip to use Dambara uh, happened and was so memorable and enjoyable. And we will always remember the trip to, 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 to use Dambara in April 2024. So I think uh, the staff members who were involved deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you.
tributes now. Mr. So Ronald Fraser, congratulations to Councillor Ronald Fraser and his partner Christina on the birth of their son, Alexander Magnus. On behalf of the Corla, I would like to offer uh, congratulations to Councillor Fraser and Christina. Mr. Roddy Murray, I would like to pay tribute to Mr. Roddy Murray of Pashkovic Lake, Isle of Sky. He passed away in Raymond Hospital, age 85, on the 4th of March, 2024. Mr. Murray was a senior official at the Corona for many years, and following his retirement, he was elected as member for the Laxdale, Wall, Laxdale Ward in the by-election in 1994, representing the Labour Party. Mr. Murray became vice convener in 1999 and served in that capacity until 2003. Mr. Murray had a particularly strong commitment to the Gaelic language and to community life and development in the Highlands and Ireland. He was also active in the community in Sky, serving on the Slate Community Council and other local organisations. On behalf of the Corona, I would like to extend condolences to Mr. Murray's wife, Effie, daughters Marianne and Jane, the extended family, colleagues. Mr. Alan F. McLeod, I would like to pay tribute to Mr. Alan F. McLeod, former councillor for the Castle Bay Ward from May 1994 to May 1999, passed away on the 9th of March, age 69. Mr. McLeod was vice chair of the Environment Services Committee during his time on the Corona. He was also active in a, in a number of organisations locally, particularly voluntary action Barra and Vathashe, where he served as a director from 1996 to 2004. On behalf of the Corona, I would like to extend sincere condolences to Mr. McLeod's family and friends. Canon Roddy Johnson, I would also like to pay tribute to Canon Roddy Johnson, parish priest in the St. Andrews Parish on the Isle of Butte. He was also the former parish priest of our Holy Redeemer Catholic Church in Stornoway, passed away suddenly on the 16th of March. Father Roddy Johnson was a very popular priest who touched the lives of many. And on behalf of the Kumura, I would like to extend our sincere condolences to Father Roddy's family, friends, and all in you. <laughs> Ms. Christine McCush, I would like to pay tribute to Christine McCush, who passed away in February. Christine joined the Nicholson Institute as an English teacher shortly after qualifying as a teacher and became assistant principal teacher of English. She remained at the Nicholson for many years, moving to Lewis Castle School as head of English until it closed in 2002, then returning to the English department at the Nicholson until her retirement. On behalf of the Corona, I would like to extend sincere condolences to Ms. Matush's family, colleagues and friends. Mrs. Ishbal McLennan, I would like to pay tribute to Ishbal McLennan from Maravik South Locks, former BBC Radio and Yale senior manager and editor of Gaelic programmes for BBC Al Abbas. He was responsible for BBC Al Abbas Gaelic programmes on TV, radio and online. He passed away on the 1st of April 2024. On behalf of the Corona, I would like to extend sincere condolences to Mrs. McLennan's family, colleagues, friends. This very sad time. Bill and G Awards 2024. I would like to congratulate all the schools and community groups who were shortlisted for awards at the recent Bill and G 2024 awards, which were held in Glasgow on Friday, 23rd of February, and especially the following schools which won prizes the Nicholson Institute Boys for the Best Documentary, Scholarback Best Youth Group in the Under 18. Category. Choice Award, Scully Nicolich, Film G Choice Award in the Under 18 category for the movie film Aisha Charlotte Marshall, which explored Marshall's journey with cancer from a young age. Finally, Udus Ayra Kaiser won the Community Award in the Over 18 category. On behalf of the Kumula, I would like to congratulate the S2 boys, the Nicholson Institute, Scholar Back. Skolina Glitch and Udus Aerokhausen for their well-deserved awards. Scottish School Schools Pipes and Drums Cross Championships. I would like to congratulate all the competitors from Western Isle Schools who competed at the recent mm -hmm. Scottish Schools Pipe and Drums Cross Championship in Kilmarnock. 
Castleway schools freestyle group finished in third place, and Scully and Glitch finished in fifth place out of our 17 strong category for the entrance from across Scotland. The Lewis and Harris Youth Pipe Band Junior C group finished in fifth place in a nine team category, and the Nova's B team finished 15th out of 21. Highlands and Islands da Dance and Music Festival. I would like to congratulate Kia. Kiara Davidson from Castleby School, who won the over 11 shield and was overall winner of the Highlands and Islands Dance and Music Festival in Oban on Saturday the 4th of that says here Saturday the 4th of May, but I think that's wrong. One of Scotland's major cultural festivals uh, which takes place on it. We now go to the agenda and item number one on the, the agenda is the minutes of the meetings of the following following full quarter meetings which took place on the 15th February, 28th February, 20th February and 28th March. Are they an accurate collection on the minutes? Okay. Yeah. Uh Councillor Gordon. I don't know which to read up on the board order please. Um the minutes of the special meeting held on Wednesday, the 28th of March, uh, has just been approved. The breached standing order six, which states on the subject of special meetings, quote, we will hold the meeting within 14 days from when the chief executive receives the written request. Councillor John Owen McLeod sent an email requesting a special meeting on the 11th of March, 2024. The meeting was held on the 28th of March 2023, 17 days later. <clears throat> this is a breach of the standing order, and I would like to know where this leaves us. Chief Executive. I I'll be guided by Mr. Mackay who made the arrangements for the meeting, but my understanding that the, the no objection was taken to the to the date of the meeting, which was um, presumably arranged around uh, the convenience of all concerned. Um, the standing orders do indeed provide that special meetings will be held within a certain time, but we have frequently and by consent uh, extended that uh, to, to times which are which are suitable. Um, as to uh, the reasons for that particular date, I would have to defer to the governance and elections manager convening. Yeah, thanks, Chief Secretary. Derek? Uh, well, uh, well uh, agreeing with everything that the, the chief executive uh, has just said, the the date was to suit the availability of both members and officers. I can't recall what was on earlier that week. There are a number of officers and members were not available. Um, the opening of the new Seaford House and also yeah. there was uh, oh. Kostla were up earlier on the week and government. And there was and ministerial visits. Yeah. Sorry, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes, good convener. I can confirm that there were ministerial visits on Monday 25th and Tuesday 26th, um, March, which which took up, which um, required the attendance of the entire the political and senior leadership. I mean, uh, I think we've broken our own rules and we've made a decision to follow the standing order. So I, I'd like to hear from the Mornington officer how we reached our standing order, yes or no. Thank you. Not as far as I'm concerned, convener. I think um, if objection was to be taken uh, to the to a meeting, that requires to be taken at the meeting itself, but not when the meeting is concluded uh, and its conclusions implemented. Uh, but I will I will hear, of course, from uh, from the governance and elections manager uh, and the monitoring officer that no objection was taken uh, to the meeting and the reasons for it being arranged. Um, when it was arranged, uh, our sound uh, that they reflect, they reflect the need and the wish uh, to have the senior political and officer leadership of the former president of the senior reasonable. Thanks, Ramadi. Langley. I agree with what you said. Is this one of the best I've ordered? I haven't made decisions in the time. 
Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Murray. Um, I'm still concerned we would be and would it be open to anyone to take it down the water for it? Thank you, John Alton McLeod. <laughs> Uh, thank you, convener. Uh, yes, I did note it was fair enough. It was uh, 14 days over, well, it was 17 or something like that. But surely going forward, should we not be uh, explaining to the members beforehand that this was the case? You see, the, I mean, there was no explanation as to why it was 17 days rather than <clears> four. <throat> this might have helped the case had it been. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Norman. Councillor Murray. Can we let me back? Uh, maybe ask the bonds and not uh, the chair or whoever was running the meeting to suspend the standing order. Could they have sustained the standing orders at the meeting? Can one be not done? Yes, it's not the meeting to say it's now, but that is the reason to see you without objection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you been Okay. So, are we all agreed? We are proving these minutes for accuracy. Yeah. Item two, declaration of interest. Members are asked to declare any interest they have in any items on the agenda. It will be helpful if members expressed why they are declaring an interest in the item concerned. Anyone declaring an interest in any other item? In the chamber or online. Okay. Questions. Okay, there was a question from a former council of Grant Fulton, but the uh, question uh, for item <coughs> number four. Is governance. Kuru is launching in Gillan Shear with Niles joint uh, integrating board appointment of proxy member. This report seeks the appointment of a substitute member to the West Niles integration joint board, IJB, following the appointment of Councillor Norman Misty McDonald as a substantive member. The current membership of the IJB is detailed at paragraph 2.3 of the report. Can I ask for nominations for a substitute member? To serve on the IJV. Anyone nominating anyone? The, the, the proxy members at the moment are the deputy leader. Really, they George It would probably be more appropriate to put that out. Um, used to the Harris member, you know, a support member because the three proxy members are from Lewis. So which Harris member? No. Okay, we'll just leave it then rather than wait for someone to, to be nominated. Uh, we'll just probably have to do that. Uh, probably work trying to uh, get someone before the next meeting of the forum. Should we take it? Yes, I would recommend us to, to make an appointment because of the irregular pattern of meetings of the IGB. I don't mean they're in any way irregular, but they don't take place in line with our committee series. So members may have a Substantive members may often have other commitments, so substitute mm -hmm. members are often required to attend. So it is better if we have a a full um, a full allocation if that's possible. Okay, thank you very much, Chief Executive. So we'll take this to the next one. Okay. Then, so Ray McKenzie. So just actually uh, you. Councillor McQueen. Thank you for the suggestion. I've already done the step that I was doing. Okay. I'm absolutely committed. Oh, thank you, Rita. That's, that's fine. Anyone else? Okay, we'll, we'll just move on before this. 
on this matter too long. Item number five is the William Mackenzie Trust appointment of a member. This report seeks the appointment of a member to be proposed as a trustee on the William Mackenzie Trust. The three current trustees are a director of Manager at Gordon Chartered Accountants in Stornoway, the incumbent of St. Peter's Episcopal Church, and a senior manager of the Bank of Scotland in Stornoway. The Bank of Scotland has indicated that it no longer wishes to appoint a trustee. Therefore, the remaining trustees are seeking a third trustee and have suggested that it will be a member of the COLA. As the trust is restricted to residents of Stornoway, it would seem sensible for that member to be one of those representing the Stornoway uh, wards, although there is no such limitation, limitation on trustees. Can I please ask for nominations for an elected member to be proposed as a trustee for the William Mackenzie Trust? Councillor McSweeney. All right, sorry, Councillor Francis Murray. I'm proposed Councillor Ray McKenzie. Councillor Ray McKenzie, proposed by Councillor Francis Murray, seconded by George Murray. Councillor George Murray. Any other nominations? Mm -hmm. okay. It's going to go on, okay. but uh, okay. I'll be happy enough. Yes. You're quite happy as well. <laughs> <laughs> Are you quite happy to accept Councillor McKenzie? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Item number six, committee <coughs> decision reports. These are for approval of the recommendations and the decision reports. Can I have a proposal and section for the following committee decision reports? First one is sustainable development committee meeting that was held on the 23rd of April. <coughs> Moved by the chairman, Councillor Crichton, and seconded by the vice chair, Andy McDonald. Thank you very much. The next meeting is the Education, Sport and Children's Services Committee held on the 23rd of April 2024. I, um, sorry, Chair, I move the committee decision report of Education, Sport and Children's Services Committee on the 23rd of April 2024. Moved by the chair, Councillor Finnegan. Do we have a seconder? The leader will second that. OK, thank you very much. Yeah. Item C is the Ordinance Scrutiny Committee meeting of the 23rd of April 2024, moved by. <laughs> Moved by the Chairman Angus Morrison and seconded by the Vice Chair Mark McDonald. Yes, thank you very much. Next item is a Transportation and Infrastructure Committee meeting of the 24th of April 2024. I move the Committee Decision Report of Transportation and Infrastructure Committee of Legislative and And seconded by. Councillor Susan Thompson, the Vice Chair. Item E is the Policy and Resources Committee of the 24th of April 2024. Uh, moved by. I move the Thank you. Moved by the leader and seconded by Deputy Leader. Paul, Councillor Paul Finnegan wants to come in. Councillor Finnegan. Thanks, Chair. Can I <coughs> have my can I have um, my dissent to item 10 recorded, please? Dr. McCann. Okay, that will record it, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Finnegan. Councillor Donald McSween. Uh, as chair of the committee legal, uh, I, have a to wait. Uh, I wish to request that there be a fixed day for the committee uh, established to the committee. 
the table for the MCs. At the moment, this is not the case, and at the time and date for the remedial development subject to be changed at short notice, which is which is what has happened in this current uh, committee series. This is not a satisfactory situation. The absence of a regular fixed day in the schedule for committee mechanic where dates and times to be subject to change at short notice can have serious implications for travel arrangements to be made by members and any uncertainty about time and date can have a negative impact on attendance at these meetings generally. Furthermore, it does not allow for the best preparation to be made for the committee by members and officers in terms, for example, of organising attendance by SI bodies. It can also mean, as has happened here, that the minutes of the committee mechanic meetings are not submitted to the Canadian Resources Committee as they should be. The absence of a fixed date in the committee calendar as well as the committee devalues it as a core committee sends out the message that Gary does not report. I also note that I've had to deal with this in English due to lack of simultaneous translation being available today. The next meeting of the committee will be this coming Tuesday at 2 p.m. and all members who are interested are very welcome. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Maxwell. I'll ask Derek Mackay to come in now. Uh, thank you, Convener. Yeah, I'll uh, speak to the Chair and Vice Chair of Company Nagalic with a, a view to <coughs> agreeing a fixed time and regular time for uh, for the Committee uh, going forward. Okay, thank you very much, Derek. Quite happy with that, Councillor Maxwell. Okay, we we'll now move on to the an amendment. Has been submitted by Councillor Gordon Murray, seconded by Councillor John Lee McKeever in respect of item 16 of the decision report of the Policy and Resources Committee of 24th April 2024. I will now ask the proposer to read the amendment. Councillor Murray. Thank you, Convener. Mm -hmm. At the recommendations detailed in the report, be deferred for further consideration into a detailed overall financial cost of or restructuring being given to all members so as to comply with the terms of standing order 40, which states that every motion on amendment proposing either expenditure or reduction in income shall identify source of funding to meet the additional expend expenditure or income loss. A motion or amendment failing to identify the source of funding shall be in order. And also that the full state consultation responses submitted by affected individuals and the recognised trade unions have been given to all members of the council. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor uh, Murray. Be reflective, I'll ask you to come in there. Thanks the voice. Thank you, Convener. Uh, I would just refer to my email of Monday, uh, Monday 29th April, which was uh, circulated to all members uh, in response to this particular point. I was conscious that Councillor Murray and Councillor McKeever couldn't, be, couldn't participate in the meeting held in Battersea on account of the uh, aforesaid IT issues. <laughs> and I've set out uh, all the relevant information uh, Asked for in this amendment uh, in that email, the cost of this, the cost of the um, the structure which you've been asked to approve um, are less than the costs of the current structure. Uh, I've said I wouldn't read the email to you, but I've set out um, some points behind that. I've, I've, I will make the point again, as I did in response to a question from Councillor Ray McKenzie. Uh, at the committee meeting, it is never possible to be absolute about the cost of the structure because that vary, these vary from time to time. People leave, we need to make adjustments, uh, people uh, are promoted, people, things uh, things move about. But of course, that is the purpose of HR subcommittee, which looks at individual posts and uh, the finan any financial implications. So I've always said from the start of this process, that the structure would not represent an additional financial burden to the caller. If it had, of course, that would be set out in the report. But the priority of the exercise was about capacity and not cost. But the costs, as it turns out, uh, are some at the moment, some 159,000 uh, reduced from the costs of the current structure. And I think that's that's very welcome. It is, I have to say, remarkable uh, in many ways. But the point is that this amendment asks for 
information about costs which I submit have been given. As to consultation responses, I, I have set out the view of corporate management team um, that's um, which was entirely supportive of the, of the process and its results. So there were no consultation responses received either by me uh, or by or by Ms. Skinner uh, or by the HR section. So there are no consultation responses to be distributed to members. And uh, had there been, we would have referred to these uh, in the report and summarised their contents, although they, they would of course been available to members. Um, and members wish to see them, but there are none to, there are none to distribute. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Leader, are you happy to accept the amendment? Uh, I don't understand to accept it tomorrow. Okay. Do you have a second for you? Okay. That's which on the Makiba. So do we go to debate or do we go to a vote? Oh. All right, okay. Yes. Just putting forward the motion. Well, that's uh, yeah. The leader and seconded by the deputy leader. Recommendation. Recommendation. Yeah. <coughs> so, do you want to vote to debate or vote? Take your vote. Debate. Okay. So, the mover or the motion. Was I just remind members that this, this item was considered in private and that there ought to be discussions about individual posts or posts from which post holders can be identified. The corporate will have to consider this matter in private. Okay. So we'll have to go into private. Not a not if there is no discussion of individual posts or post okay. holders who can be identified by these posts. We'll just have to, we'll have to go into private. Yeah, we, we can't take that risk. So we'll have to get members of the public to do well. Or do, do you want to do it in? No, no, we'll just, we'll, we'll, no, we'll just do it just now. Just get it out of the way. Members, members. Okay, so we all Francis Murray and certainly by Councillor Susan Thompson. And I'll ask Councillor Francis Murray uh, to read out the motion. Councillor Murray. <coughs> Following the proposal to be considered by you, HI, not based on head release, we need to allow us to do all that in the organization. Okay, thank you very much, um, Councillor Murray. I'll ask the Chief Executive to comment on this motion. Um, thank you, thank you, Convener. Um, I think this is a highly relevant uh, point for us. The Western Isles and indeed for the corner because we are so we are so involved in the um of the economic development but also tertiary education provision ourselves as well as our responsibilities for primary and secondary education. There's a, uh, there is much change going on as we know within UHI at present. I, I think this is a highly relevant motion and between myself and the Between myself and the Chief Officer for the Children's Services and other relevant parties will be happy to submit a report. Okay, thank you very much, Chief Executive. Do members agree to approve the notice of motion? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, to further two notices of motion, uh, but I'll ask Derek Mackay to come in because they're both similar. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Michael. I'm just be, uh, just before the meeting, I uh, I received uh, confirmation from the proposal on second out in respect of item nine, uh, Councillor uh, Kenneth McLean and Councillor Ian M. McLeod, who indicated that they were intending to withdraw their uh, notice of motion subject to um, uh, an amendment to I, uh, item eight, which the uh, and the proposal of the amendment accepted and. Uh, on behalf of the UB group, Councillor McLean and Councillor McLeod said that, that UB would support the amendment, am, uh, amended notice of motion at the item 8. All right, okay. Uh, Councillor Thompson. Okay, 
Councillor Thompson, would you prepare me? be prepared to, to read out the motion, please? So that all members know. That the caller acknowledges the savings agreed in setting the 2024-25 budget. That lobbying by the caller has led to a one-off island post crisis emergency fund increase being allocated for this year, and therefore there is a material change of circumstance. Following the announcement of the allocation of the island's post crisis emergency funding for 2024-25 from the Scottish Government, four additional island trolls that the Corla intended to meet the vital needs of community transport in rural areas throughout the Western Islands allocate at least £120,000 from the island's post crisis emergency funding to the community transport budget for 2024-25, subject to the confirmation of the level of funding and any conditions. Thank you very much, Councillor Thompson. Chief Executive, can I speak to him, please? Yes, Kim Peter, I'll be very, very brief. This is a policy decision for members. Okay. And there's a policy decision for members, and there is no financial provision uh, to anyone to take that decision, should you so wish. Is anyone coming about this? All members quite happy to accept this amendment. Yep. Uh, sorry, uh, it's not a motion. Uh, Council Gordon Murray's second up. Everyone quite happy? Thank you very much. And now we go, we're going into private. But there's one thing I want to bring up before we go into private. Um, I spoke at the start of the meeting about uh, the trip to use Dambara next week. All our meetings are you last week, sorry. <laughs> last week. Another one next week, guy. Last week, um, you know, all our meetings are usually held in, in Lewis. We went to use Tambara last week. How about we go to the Faro? Yes. <laughs> Leverborough in, in Harris Harris for the se September full council meeting. Um say we go down in the morning, uh, visit a few places in Harris. Uh have our evening meal there and maybe have uh, our full call at six o'clock in the evening in, in South Harris, in the, the Olympia Hall in, in Harris. All right, so get the date in your diaries, please. September, right? Yeah. yeah. No excuses, three line whip, no one's got Lamy. Lamy. <laughs> yeah, no excuses, please get it into your diary. All right, everyone, quite happy with that. Okay, then, so can I ask the press to leave, please, before we go to item 10 on the agenda? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just get some time.